a Frosty's uh, shake from Wendy's. What's going on guys, Bel Air here. We are rocking with Frosty today as we're going to look over some gameplay from the impressive rookie who started out the season, of course now infamously as a part of NRG and they made a preseason switcheroo to bring in another player which resulted in Frosty joining this uh, upstart young squad with a lot of talent alongside Reveal, who is an up and coming player, and Scribbles as well, who I think might have been the youngest player in North America this season. We've hopped in to a pretty impactful game right away. This is from Open Qualifier 4, in which the Snowmen made a uh, top four finish. Semifinals is another way to know a top four. And uh, this is game five against Gen G in the uh, Swiss round three. So uh, winner of this will go straight to the playoffs. Loser of this, of course, has to continue on through Swiss uh, against a really good Gen G team here. So Snowmen have had a lot of momentum, big wins in this tournament. And uh, they're going to see if they can close out the deal here against uh, against Gen G. And I'm just realizing, I'm so sorry, guys, but I had removed the uh, the overlay by accident. Now we have some boost. We don't have teammate names, though. Come on, Bel Air, get it together, and now we are all good. So Frosty had a great first season, especially statistically. Um, it might feel like the Snowmen didn't really do much, but, you know, don't remember, not just a semifinals here. Uh, but also, this Snowman team won about 48% of their games. So, no majors, but for a team who had never played together and a lot of players who have little to no experience in the RLCS, very impressive out of the gates here. Kind of a bummer that NRG moved off of seemingly exactly the kind of player that they needed to find success late in the season. Frosty is just kind of a, a less proven version of Aqua in many ways. Uh, really fast, loves to play up-tempo, loves to play ahead of and on the ball. Great at keeping his momentum. Uh, really fluid movement on the pitch as well. Um, and, you know, there's some things that definitely could be improved, but some of those are just the things that you anticipate from a young player. Let's go over some stats real quick here for Frosty. Above average in goals, assists, saves, shots, Exactly at par, uh, average if you will, for um, shooting percentage. And above average in goal participation and rating as well. And we have a bunch of advanced metrics that we'll get into a little bit. Um, but we kind of talked about what kind of player Frosty is as Reveal almost crunches uh, a double touch off the ground there uh, for a goal. But some of the intangible stuff that you don't see on the stat sheet uh, really stands out for Frosty, whether that just be proficiency on the goal line and, um, you know, the ability to perform in big moments like what we're seeing here. He is kind of the namesake for this snowman team and uh, leads them in essentially every single uh, category statistically. Um, to talk about that just a little bit, he leads snowmen in all categories, uh, you know, core stats. Of course, there's stuff like, uh, you know, positioning on the field and whatnot. But as far as, like, your core kind of counting stats go, and that was a funky save there, leads the snowmen in all categories besides overall stolen boost, stolen small pads, and uh, demos per game. So is really a workhorse for this team um, in essentially every single way. And... Uh, to go over a couple of things that could be improved on real quick. We just saw one of them that really stood out for me from watching some film, um, which is, you know, backboard defense. I was watching uh, their open qualifier six. I'm going to watch some games from that event in a second here, but their opening round series against Shopify, um, you know, some situations where he's on essentially full boost and isn't able to make uh, strong impact plays from uh, his own backboard defending. Um, but, you know, that's something that will just improve with time. Um, another thing that stands out is 
those small boost pads, um, pathing is something that will, you know, also come with time and attention and things like that, but that just improves your overall gameplay and then just awareness in a general sense. And uh, again, going three for three here, all things that should improve as he gets more repetitions under his belt. Almost 100 games this season from Frosty as he's going to put the dagger in the heart of Gen G here. Six seconds left, he's going to score a goal. Now we're about to hop over to the second game, so I'll save a couple of these other stats I want to go over. In the second game, we're going to try and focus a little more on, uh, you know, some storyline stuff for what Frosty has been, what he can become. We're going to close out there against Genji. Scribbles already left, did not want to stick around to celebrate the win. You can see his teleport laser there uh, right next to Chronic, but Frosty, two goals on two shots and to save to his name. Genji putting up a lot of shots here. Heavy volume, 14 shots, but are unable to put away any as Reveal had himself a game on the goal line, five saves, and both of those assists came from Scribbles. So great all-around performance here from the Snowmen. Now let's hop over to some Open Qualifier 6 to get some recent gameplay, uh, and we'll talk storyline with Frosty. All right, we are back for game two here. Uh, not only game two of the video, but also game two of this series against uh, Shopify Rebellion that we uh, talked about a second ago. This is Open Qualifier 6. This is round 1. And we see Frosty on the Finnick. As one's going to roll in there for reveal, uh, kind of dribble into uh, in into the net, unable to be saved by Shopify there. Cool to see that, uh, that Frosty is not afraid to switch up the whips, as it were. Octane in the first game... Uh, and now on the Finnick, as he's going to take a little pit stop there to let Justin fly by, and then he is going to try and get a read here on the ball to get it out. No boost is going to go upfield and get a boost deal. Before we talk storyline, it's actually uh, tie a bow on some of those stats. We saw him go upfield to get that boost deal. 17th in the RLCS. Uh, you know, filtering by players who have played over 50 games just so there's no funkiness, but across all regions, 17th in the RLCS for uh, stolen big boost pads. We saw one of them there to go upfield. And fourth closest to the ball overall, which is just incredible. Frosty is always uh, chasing the play, trying to follow in the footsteps of North American brethren like Arsenal and Rettles before him. And uh, final stat that really stood out to me, eighth in average boost um, in, in the tank. So I think he's sitting at like high 40s or something like that, which is pretty incredible for him to commonly have so much boost. That's something that you typically see evolve as you progress throughout your career. Speaking of that career, Frosty's young, so basically all of this is hypothetical. But what are the early returns telling us? Well, Frosty is a player who so far is a high volume player who likes to be on the ball and uh, is kind of uh, heliocentric in his offensive approach, uh, really looking to cut rotations and take over plays when he can, uh, make plays on the balls that commonly involve himself, although we do see him try and set up reveal there for a transition go. Um, and there's some really fluid movement that we said we were talking about that we liked. I think a good way to think about what uh, Frosty is so far is maybe through some NBA comps for those of you out there who follow the sport. I drew up a list. I think uh, I think four that stand out to me: Brandon Miller, given that he's young in his in his career and is the best player on the team. A similar sentiment for Jalen Green, although Jalen is more of that high volume offensive player that we've talked about. Same goes for an Anthony Simons type, um, and then. Finally, uh, somebody like Tyler Hero, who's a little bit farther in their career. So all young guards who uh, can score in bunches, um, which is a hot commodity in the RLCS uh, as well as the NBA. Some of the things that are drawbacks that are similar to a player like Brandon Miller is just some of the decision making, the, the judgment can elapse sometimes as we'll see, you know, errant passes from Frosty that um, you know, lead to turnovers, but when you're handling the ball as much as he is, uh, things like that kind of come with the territory. 
The move off of NRG, honestly, in the grand scheme of things, might have been uh, a great decision or, you know, lack of decision, just uh, outcome for Frosty as he got his own team here with no expectations, really just got to kind of take the results as they came, um, which I think is beneficial for a young player who is looking to make his mark on North America. There were really no expectations here for Snowman as that one is going to not quite bump out and we're gonna see Frosty make a cool and calm goal line save there. But NRG would have brought a lot of pressure, especially for Frosty being a fairly unknown name. And we saw the turbulence that NRG faced over the course of this season. Now Frosty has set him up where he himself up where he really got to showcase his own skills, and now teams have a little bit more film on him. It's like taking a player out of high school versus, you know, watching him for a year in college. You kind of have a better understanding of what the product that you're gonna be getting is. So I could certainly see Frosty getting a shot at a team that's just a little bit higher of a clip than this current one. Um, but then the test there will be, uh, can he be more of an off ball creator um, or is he going to be set up to remain a number one option? I think about a team like Cloud9, who we just did a video on for dropping Zanil. Maybe they're looking to get a player who can bring a little bit more of an offensive punch in a player like Frosty, um, or perhaps uh, a team a little bit higher up the ranks like an M80 is going to look to um, add a little bit more bite to their offensive package as well those are of course just hypotheticals we have still have worlds ahead of us a lot of off-season tournaments to get to um, but i think that frosty as we see here bottom of the score sheet but still incredibly impactful with an assist and two saves one of which uh, helped them shut out rebellion as a they go completely empty on the stat sheet outside of two piece dropping a double savior there um, but i think so far, we have seen good results from Frosty, enough for him to get uh, a chance a little bit higher up the ladder. I think the real questions that are unknowns for me is uh, how he does, um, how his personality is. That's something that is a foreign uh, item to me, as well as his ability to um, communicate. But I will say that I commonly see him um, streaming. So he is a player who is uh, putting in the work at least um, publicly, which as uh, as we continue to develop this eSport, I think your personality and your ability to draw fans uh, is something that bigger organizations are going to be paying uh, closer and closer attention to. So a pretty uh, remarkable rookie season here from Frosty, uh, especially getting that quarterfinals that we saw. But let's watch one more game. We're really going to lock into um, the gameplay and see what we can make of what's going good and what's going bad for the leader of the snowmen. All right, let's wrap up with a potential closeout game here against Dignitas. This is from Open Qualifier 5, and I think this is round uh, two or three of Swiss, uh, maybe even four, guys. I don't know, but... Let's, uh, let's lock in and see what Frosty is able to do against um, a pretty exciting lobby. we got some young talent here in uh, Stizzy, as well as, of course, the entire Snowman roster, and then some veterans on the other side in Gyro and Arsenal. We hop into the footage here with Frosty rotating pretty far outside of the play. It's a powerful first touch there. Um, and is going to quickly regain his momentum as he transitions back to that big boost, something that we know that he uh, loves and, and thrives on. Going to get the little doink there to beat Gyro and start a transition play here. Is going to wisely grab that mid boost and then uh, float all the way back. Now let's see what he can do on the backboard. He's actually going to leave it, get up quickly to this one, conserve about half a tank, float one over Gyro, and that is... Very impressive. You, of course, would have liked to see Dignitas get up a little bit earlier to that one, but hey, hand down, man down. Frosty is going to make them pay as they're 2 1 up in this series here. Smartly is going to take a little bit of a step to allow his teammates to take that big boost, and I cannot believe he got to that double touch and then somehow gets the boost deal without getting demoed uh, a little bit of 
luck there from Frosty, who is going to kill this, get a choice 50, get the uh, little AJ momentum grabber there, and uh, Frosty is really putting a mark on this game so far. It does not seem deterred about the stakes of the game being a potential closeout against a good Dignitas team. Uh, Frosty continues to chug along. Less than optimal back pass there, but I get what he was going for. Tried to cut on the ball. Maybe would have liked to be positioned a little bit better if he could draw it up again. But uh, as they say, it is what it is. Kind of made things a little bit weird there for Scribbles. I don't really know how they're calming that, but it seems like he almost like cut in front of the ball and made Scribbles kind of take a, a beat there to understand what was going on as he is not one to uh, kind of let the play develop. He sprints in there to try and make something happen on the ball and I take that big boost that he had missed. And uh, so far, it seems like Frosty really, really enjoys playing up-tempo. Um, seems to like to really save a lot of his momentum like we had talked about previously and we can start to see where some of those stats are really coming into fruition as I was curious if he was going to try and take that one back to the backboard see if he could catch it from the ground but he actually was going to get up to that one in the air stays close here heavy first touch but it turns into a pass going to bump his teammate and uh, throw a reveal kind of out of cycle for a second there and keeping a really high line here. It seems like Dignitas are a little bit out of sorts. They're worried about the speed in which their opponents are playing them and they're trying to make quick plays on the ball as Scribbles is going to take all the boost. Frosty smartly is going to keep what he has and I thought he might rotate all the way up to grab that big boost. That reminds me quite a bit of how uh, Rettles plays in the video that we watched recently of him where he is always cycling up to steal that big boost. Uh, whether or not it's always the optimal look, uh, you kind of, you know, take the good with the bad. Pretty powerful boom out. And this game is really, really up-tempo, which seems to be favoring the snowmen here. Tough ball to read and uh, can't really give it much of an effort. As I think Stizzy's going to tie us up there. What did you guys, what did you think of Frosty over the course of, uh, of, of this season? Um, were, were you surprised by the quality that he was able to bring out after being dropped by NRG? It seems like most people felt like it was a mistake, um, as we talked about in that first game, as Frosty still is just controlling the flow here, uh, kind of let that ball get away from him, and now he's cycled all the way out of the play with no boost, but Luckily, his teammates buy some time in the midfield, and this is where Stizzy, or excuse me, Frosty can struggle, but he's able to get out there. But uh, ultimately, Dignitas are going to keep the ball in their half. It just seems like sometimes he struggles to um, understand when he's on the backboard, like where the other, just awareness of where his teammates, but also the opponents are, as uh, his teammates are going to double commit there. Um, pretty late into this critical game, but it does not bite them in the butt there. And, like, that's some of that stuff that we kind of anticipate, right? If you're um, a rookie on a young team, which is uh, that sometimes you're just a little bit out of sorts um, on the communicative end, as Dizzy is going to try and break one out in transition here. Reveal somehow stays on it. Frosty is going to cut in, luckily, get that ball out of here, but he's now on zero boost, and they should definitely kill this. They do. We're going to overtime. I didn't even plan that, guys. Going to get a free ball here. Never mind, I lied. That's why I'm not very good at Rocket League, because I thought he had that free. How is he going to very shakily try and get out of that corner? Uh, that's exactly how. It's just the opponent was so caught off guard by him not making any contact. They weren't there to make a play on it. It's a great dribble. Takes out Gyro. Can't beat Arsenal uh, after him, but pretty good attempt there uh, to try and put this game away Let's see what he does here i was curious if he was going to try and float out to that ball uh, but it seems like he ultimately let the play come to him take a little possession here try and kill this one in the corner keep his teammates on it make a little bit of trouble there on the goal line 
And uh, playing pretty deep, which is okay. Trying to make a play up, but Arsenal hasn't beat to it. Ooh, that was a really nice cut there to keep that ball out of the midfield and just gets caught within a flip there, but maybe it ultimately ends up doing something positive for his team. So this one, Flo is going to... I didn't know if he was going to go cut up and take that mid boost. He ultimately leaves it, and that's an awkward one there, but he makes a great clear out of it. Woo, almost got caught by Arsenal on the back. Got to be... A little more heads up on those. Oh my goodness. That was way more difficult than it needed to be, but ends up beating one and a half there. Uh, that was <laughs> pretty nervy. Um, ball almost floats into his own goal, um, but let's see him try and make up for it here. Doesn't go for the reset, just tries to keep the soft touch on his hood. And uh, he's gonna rotate all the way out here. See, like there's the small pads, like he caught what, one, maybe two on his entire way back where he could have easily got up to full boost um, if he was just trying to work the pennies a little bit better there. And uh, it seems like both teams are just waiting for the other to make a mistake as this game that has been very up-tempo is gonna try and take a little bit of a beat here. Arsenal booms out. Tries to catch it and get the demo up on Stizzy. Too heavy of a first touch there by Frosty, but he's going to find the big boost in his own corner. And I cannot believe that people do this for the entirety of a series. It is so difficult to cast games like this. I don't know if this is what we're going to be doing for the third games in all of these videos moving forward, but I do like the idea of splitting it up a little better into stats and then storyline and then gameplay. But... That was enough of me trying to buy time. Let's get back into the game here as I wish that I had a glass of water next to me. Stizzy's gonna just, I guess, miss that one and almost gets a demo on Arsenal. This one's gonna come all the way back. Heavy first touch, which is great to get one over Stizzy. And then, oh, he just trusted that Gyro was gonna have that one, so he saved 30, but if he would have known that Gyro was gonna miss, he probably could have put away that double there. Calls off reveal, gets the double up, tries to get a little bit of a momentum killer on the back wall, and uh, again, this one just continues to fly back and forth. And there's our ball game. How did this one end up ending? It's Arsenal on the back wall tries to carry it out reveal takes it off of his hood and that's it just kind of rolls in honestly pretty funky here's reveal here with the dark dark blue fennec uh just well that's that as uh let's go back a second and pause so we can see what the score line is here Everybody on a Dignitas with a ton of saves to their names as snowmen are going to put up 13 shots on them to only eight from Dignitas. So it seems like snowmen were really controlling the pace of play there, controlling the midfield, it seemed like, um, and almost no sustained offense from Dignitas as Frosty is going to put up a goal and four saves to his name to uh, move his team forward, I think, into the fifth round of a Swiss from this Open Qualifier 5 and sending Dignitas to... Um, a pretty tough spot um, in their own right. So that is it for Frosty, guys. What did you think of the gameplay that we watched today? What are you anticipating for Frosty heading into next season? Is he somebody who can continue to uh, improve and become uh, a, a budding superstar within this region? Or is he destined to uh, kind of be one of those gatekeeping, offensively mechanical players um, who kind of float around the bubble on a couple different iterations. Very interested to know what your comps are for him, uh, whether it be in the RLCS or in the NBA. If it's another sport, feel free to leave it, but I might not know it as well. But guys, that's it for the video today. Thank you so much for checking out the content. Wanted to take a moment to spotlight some of our recent subscribers to get us over the thousand subscriber mark. Thank you all so, so very much. If you have a little extra time and want to catch me, I was recently on the Shift cast um, alongside uh, Michael from Shift. And uh, yeah, guys, that's it for me. So thank you so much for checking out the content, taking the time to watch the content. And until next time, take it easy.